tell me is this art watch this video at a higher speed because i will talk slowly we are talking about the king of constants pi it's hard to imagine a more universal constant than this and it's a mathematical constant but i am going to be making a case today that it only equals this value extended up to infinite correct digits is a special circumstance it could be 3.2 also and this is not fiction this is not abstract math this comes out of special relativity so let's first start by defining what pi is and why this definition wouldn't equal this constant that we call and which i would from now call pi not for reference okay so pi obviously everyone knows is defined in the most basic definition to be the ratio of circumference and diameter of a perfect circle and we can't have perfect circles so we can have it in our thought experiments but we are not going to have circles we are going to have rings or hoops that are perfect or disks okay and what we would do is to measure the circumference of this disk and measure the diameter of the disk and then we would get the ratio and that ratio would equal pi for any disk that we can think of as long as it's perfect okay now we have to talk about what we mean by measuring by that we mean that we have scales that we use to measure now obviously measuring a curved distance with a linear scale is difficult so imagine that this scale is extremely tiny it's nanometers picometers as tiny as you would want it to be and then we'd place them like this it would still obviously on a microscopic level look like this and not perfect and that is why you have to imagine in infinite number of these scales anyway so this is how we would measure the circumference and the diameter and then for a ring which we would just see like this it wouldn't change of course not but then something interesting happens if you come up with a ring or you can think of a ring which is spinning what's the difference between a circle and a spinning circle mathematically there is none but physically if you're talking about a ring and a spinning ring there are differences now keeping up aside the fact that there are material problems if you spin a disk or wheel too fast it explodes keeping that aside let us imagine a very slow rotation so these material problems don't come into picture on the time scales rather we want to talk about so what's the difference between a spinning ring and a stationary ring first we want to know what's the difference between a length scale let us say this is the meter stick that is stationary with respect to me and then another meter stick which was perfectly equal to this but then i just sent it moving now einstein showed in 1905 that the length of this stick this meter scale actually shrinks so this if it's moving it's this now of course to keep it here to show you that it's shorter i have to keep subtracting the distance because it's moving so i can't just i have to i have to show this but imagine that i have subtracted the appropriate distance with each second so it remains here so it's shorter okay and this okay first of all obviously those of you who are not comfortable with relativity this might seem ridiculous and this was the case before einstein where they thought this is an apparent length contraction but einstein said no this is a real length contraction and this is the currently accepted view that this is a real length contraction when you have a meter stick and it starts moving it actually gets shorter with respect to you and this is going to have a real consequence here because you see when you start placing these meter sticks along the circumference of this circle when it's born rotating uh you would see that the meter stick has shrunk so for you the circumference would come out to be bigger than what it would be if the circ the ring were not spinning and when you measure this diameter you would not see any length contraction this is length contraction you would not see it for the diameter because it only happens in the direction in which that object is moving so if i have a rectangular and it's moving in this direction 
it would only be shortened in this direction it wouldn't be shortened in these two directions so since every point on the circle or the ring is moving in tangential direction to the center it would have length contraction along that direction and since uh, we are measuring the diameter along the perpendicular direction like this where the speed is not at all there is no component along this direction so there is no this would this meter stick would remain the same so as a result your pi now which is uh, c dash by d dash but d dash is equal to d uh, where dash represents the measurement of a of this ring which is rotating which has the same diameter now c dash as it turns out would equal gamma times c and what is gamma gamma is a fact it's a number greater than 1 so it, it can be 1.1 1 1.2 1, 1 it can be 300 whatever so it's a it's the amount by which the your meter stick has shrunk so for example if you're traveling at a certain very high speed extremely high speed uh, this meter stick would shrink to a 0.5 of it 50 percent and then gamma would be uh, 2 so the formula is that uh, the length in your frame where you are not moving and then uh, of the meter stick and then you send the meter stick flying it would become uh, l by gamma and i can tell you the formula for gamma which is this uh, actually the formula for gamma is 1 by under root 1 minus v square by c square where c is the speed of light or the maximum speed of causality in the universe speed of light just happens to take that speed and 1 by gamma would mean that you have your lens have contracted like this now see that v is always going to be less than c that's another thing about relativity so this is a smaller constant this is a number smaller than 1 so this is l dash is smaller than l and since your meter sticks gets meter stick gets shorter when you measure the circumference you would get a larger circumference because your meter sticks now you need more number of meter sticks to go around that circle and that's gamma c so this would be pi it would it be it would be in a spinning system pi would be oh sorry uh, i mean this is pi so pi would be pi naught times gamma and if you want you could uh, put the gamma as a function of the angular speed omega which is well let's say 1 by 1 minus now v square v is omega r so omega square r square by c square so this is basically pi and for a spinning hoop now you would say obviously mathematically there is no difference between a circle and a spinning circle so this uh, this sounds like bad result sounds like a bad result but then this is very important and this is something that Einstein while, while writing his this book which I recommend that you read he always talks about real physical objects so when when you're talking about a reference frame like a Cartesian coordinate system we assume that it just exists out there he always talks about reference system attached to some object some rigid body <laughs> because rigid bodies exist Cartesian coordinate system don't just exist on their own so we have to say that if pi is equal to the circumference of real but perfect circles with uh, ratio of it with the diameter then your pi is going to change it's not it's not gonna be this all the time so depending on how, if you increase this omega your pi would increase it could be four five six whatever you want you just have to keep increasing the omega of course at one point the hoop would break apart or any real hoop would break apart so this is limited but in in thought experiments where you have perfect in, in insanely good materials this could go take any value okay now of course any real material would also have problems of uh, de deformation elasticity and so on but this is a limited thought experiments okay now you might ask can it be lower 
than this value because here it's only like pi naught or above. Now it can be lower. Uh, and I'll come to that in a minute. But before that, let me talk about there are other definitions of pi. What about those? For example, if you have, you know, one, one square plus two square plus three square up to infinity. We don't write infinity. That's a that's considered bad practice. Um, this is pi square by six. So if you define pi to be defined by the, the summation of this converging infinite series, then where is the spinning disk here? Now here is the cra it's a crazy thing that I would like to say. What if numbers get scaled by gamma in in moving frames? How do you know that your two is the same as the two as a for a person who is moving? And you might think that's crazy, but listen to this. Where do numbers come from? The very basic idea that numbers are like lengths, right? How else would you have the idea of numbers? Of course, you can measure apples and an apple wouldn't become gamma times apple when it's moving. But uh, other things about the apple, the length of the apple, the volume of the apple, that might change. So I don't know, maybe it's possible to put gamma here and prove that this still holds. Or maybe the value of pi only changes for if you stick to the primary definition of pi. Or otherwise you have to say that uh, there are better definitions of pi and this definition of pi does not always give you the pi, the pi naught. Okay, now I'll talk about the case where uh, pi can be less than uh, pi naught, which is when, uh, this is hypothetical and I won't talk too much about it because I haven't studied general relativity a lot. So anyway, basically, if you have a triangle, any triangle and I accidentally draw a triangle that looks near equilateral and it has angles, three angles, internal angles, and you take the summation of these, they equal pi, it equals pi, and the angle is measured in radians here. Um, now, if you place these angles like one in New York, one in Paris, and one in New Delhi, wait, it's called NCR, I don't know what NCR stands for. Anyway, if you do this, it, it doesn't equal pi. I think it equals something greater than pi because this is not a flat triangle anymore. And by the definitions of straight lines and so on, on, on curved surface that is Earth, uh, you would still get a triangle on this curved surface, but you wouldn't get the angles, the sum of angles as pi. And of course, this is not real space. This is the surface of the Earth is, uh, we, you can always dig through the Earth and get the actual triangle, which would be a Euclidean flat triangle. Like if you can dig through the Earth and all, then uh, it would equal pi. But as it happens, it's possible that space itself has curvature. I mean, of course, we know that it has in presence of uh, massive bodies, etc. And the universe itself might have a curvature. And so, hypothetically, there could be other universes which are hyperbolic, which I won't go into the detail now, but basically that the alpha plus beta plus gamma would be less than pi in the hyperbolically uh, curved universes. So that's about it for now. Thank you for watching.